What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Cam ATL and thank you for joining me as always for a week 13 first look lineup video. Sorry I didn't drop the uh, video in the morning. I was busy doing some other things. I had to run some errands and stuff in the morning so I wasn't able to record my first look lineup video as always so I apologize for that but I am dropping it tonight instead of the morning. So anyway so either way it's being dropped. Now um, as you guys know, in the beginning of the week, uh, aka right now, uh, I dropped the first look lineup video where we go position, but uh, we don't go position by position. We go position by position and we set them in the lineup. We build a lineup together pretty much, get you guys started on a first look lineup, kind of get you an idea of the way that I really like to go this week. And then later on in the week, we do a full slate breakdown position by position and talk about everybody who's in a great player pool, great spot and all that stuff. As long as that matters. This season, it hasn't really mattered what position they're in, what statistical back backing they have, how great it is how bad it, it doesn't matter guys in bad spots or less than spots that other guys are going off where the guys in fantastic spots are disappearing and it just is what it is I don't know if it's COVID causing it I don't know but I know a lot of people in the industry are struggling in NFL this season it just is what it is you know but no excuses I mean all you can do is continue to grind and you know hustle the slate out I mean I'm going to work as hard as I always do and I'm going to once again put a lineup out that I cannot possibly make better in my mind and then whatever happens happens at the end of the day so I'm shooting for the stars I'm going for GPP takedowns here on out I'm going for the dub, the the big dub to make up for the lackluster season that NFL has been in general for fantasy players this year so um so yeah I'm going for it anyways first look lineup let's get straight into it greenlightdfs.com to join the squad Let's get it. First off, at quarterback, I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins in this one. Kirk Cousins gets the privilege of going against going uh, up against Jacksonville, the worst secondary in the league. Um, they have been giving it up a ton through the air. They're getting absolutely dominated week in, week out. On top of that, Kirk Cousins has been super solid the last four weeks, 2018, 26, and 30, especially the last few weeks at home. Once again, he's at home in a dome going against Jacksonville. You guys know how much I love at home in a dome, plain and simple. Kirk Cousins has been absolutely balling. He's got huge weapons. Adam Thielen's coming back for him. He dropped a 30 last week with Adam Thielen out. Adam Thielen should be coming off the COVID list and will be back in this one. He's going to have his favorite target back. He's going to have Jefferson Thielen. Um, he's going to have Rudolph. Irv Smith might be back. Dalvin Cook, obviously. He's going to have all his weapons, and Jacksonville's secondary has no chance. Okay, Whereas Jacksonville is okay versus the run. They suck versus the pass. And Glennon, the Jack quarterback for Jacksonville, is actually serviceable. He actually played decent last week. So Kirk Cousins in a great spot here in a dome at home. I'm expecting an, uh, another 25-plus performance out of Kirk Cousins in this one. And I'm hoping his ownership is low. So I really, really like Kirk Cousins going against Jacksonville. At running backs, first guy I want to talk about is going to be David Montgomery. I really love this spot for Montgomery. Uh, he's going against a Detroit squad that sucks versus the run. They gave up, they've given up 17, 15, 22, 42. They're bottom in the league against the run. One of the worst run defenses. Give it up to pass catching backs where David Montgomery shines there too. He got six targets with Trubisky back at quarterback last week. Got five catches, 40 yards, and a touchdown, as well as 11 carries and 103 rushing yards so, um, so he had a great game with 28 DraftKings points now he's going against Detroit solid matchup at home in Chicago good plus statistical matchup against the Detroit defense I love David Montgomery and on DraftKings another guy that I really like because of the full point PPR and I'm glad to see it I almost played him last week but safety reasons I couldn't go Eckler coming off injury but now Austin Eckler at home in Los Angeles, going against the New England Patriots. Kenyon Drake just uh, beat the Patriots for 24 DraftKings points. Um, the Chargers have other guys that I would expect Belichick to try to hone in on, like Keenan Allen, try to stop. You know Belichick likes to take number ones away. I would expect them to focus on Keenan Allen, where that should open up a ton for Austin Eckler. On top of that, Austin Eckler was a wide receiver one last week. 16 targets in his first game back. 11 catches for 85 receiving yards, as well as 14 carries, 44 rushing yards. That type of usage is Christian McCaffrey type of usage if as long if he was getting 20 carries. So he was six carries away from like Christian McCaffrey type usage, even more than that, honestly, in the target range. 16 targets. 
So this matchup going against New England, I absolutely love Austin Eckler. He's pretty much going to be a wide receiver one. And on DK, I really love him for full point PPR. At wide receiver, Derek Carr let a lot of people down last week, and especially me, um, in the fantastic matchup in a dome against Atlanta. Bad secondary. Oh, man. Dude got like four points. Uh, maybe his head just wasn't in it. Maybe having the kid, his head just wasn't in it. Now that he's had the kid, he'll come in and have a good game. So I am okay with Derek Carr. I just couldn't pull myself to put him putting him in this first look lineup. Like I just couldn't do it. After he let me down like he did last week, I could not do it. But anyways, I, I'm okay with going Hunter Renfro though. Okay, the Jets, the reason I love Renfro is because the Jets give up the most fantasy points the last four games. The Jets have given up the most fantasy points to slot receivers in the entire league. Okay, so expect Hunter Renfro, who is the slot receiver for the Raiders, to have a fantastic game here. I think Renfro is going to have a really good one here. And if you want to go Derek Carr after everybody probably will get off of him because of how bad he was last week. Going against the Jets, this is a get right spot. Jets are the worst secondary in the league. And then it's Jacksonville. And then it's teams like Seahawks and stuff like that. But yeah, Hunter Renfro going against the Jets. Great matchup. He got nine targets last week against Atlanta. Seven catches, 73 yards. Hunter Renfro is going to destroy the Jets. Like I said, the slots give up the most fantasy points to slot. Uh, the Jets give up the most fantasy points to slot in the entire league the last four games. Expect Hunter Renfro, a guy that Derek Carr obviously loves to target, to have a great game. Now, you guys know I want to pair somebody with Cousins. And Jefferson went off last game, but I'm going to go right back to the well on his main target, Adam Thielen. I'm expecting Adam Thielen to be back. Most likely he will be back. I know he's 7'3", but at home in a dome going against the league's worst secondary in Jacksonville, second worst behind uh, the Jets. Adam Thielen's in a fantastic spot. There's nobody in their right mind that can stop Adam Thielen here. Okay, Adam Thielen is a right side receiver. He lines up on the right side of the formation, right? He's going against the Jacksonville squad that he's going to be facing off with Chris Claybooks. Claybrooks. All right? Chris Claybrooks. Claybrooks gives up almost half a point fan half a fantasy point per route ran, gets targeted over 21% of the time on a secondary that's really really bad. This is the weak weak spot. Chris Claybrooks is the guy that you want to take advantage of here. I really really love Adam Thielen. He's in a fantastic spot and uh literally to put it in perspective for you again, because you know I'm a stats guy, even though it hasn't mattered this year, I'm a guy, I like to do my research. Right side wide receivers, like Adam Thielen, on the right side of the formation. The Jacksonville Jaguars, the last four games, are the second worst. Throughout the entire season, they're the third worst versus right side wide receivers. And a guy with Adam Thielen's talent should absolutely destroy them, especially in this lineup where I got Kirk Cousins. Adam Thielen is a go. Now, I know all of you are going to be like, oh, what? The Colts defense is great. Yes, the Colts have a great defense. But with Will Fuller out now, um, Brandon Cooks is in a fantastic position here. I get he's 5'6". Uh, um, I wish we were getting a little bit more of a deal with him, but at a, in a dome in Houston. Now, this is a Colts squad that Brandon Cooks is going to be lined up on the right side. So he's going to face a lot of Rocky Sin. Rocky Sin has been the corner to pick on for the Colts. He's given up over a 23% target share. He's giving up almost 0.4 fantasy points per target. He's getting targeted on majority of the time, pretty much. Out of all these Colts second uh, cornerbacks, he's getting targeted the most. Rocky Sin and Brandon Cooks will be going against him. On top of that, no Will Fuller. Brandon Cooks is going to be getting peppered with targets. Will Fuller being out is a huge bump to Brandon Cooks. Love him here in a dome game against the Colts. Uh, Colts are a solid secondary, but on the weak spot that they do have, Brandon Cook should take advantage of that. And it should be a good game, too. The Colts should not struggle to score. Houston probably will have to throw to keep up. So I love that. Next up, another uh, Vegas guy. I know that I don't have Derek Carr in here because I just can't pull myself to do it, but I will be okay with going Darren Waller. I don't know why I skipped the last. Oh, where where is? Hold on. What was my third receiver? Oh, sorry. Let me put our third receiver in. I literally talked about him and didn't lock him in. Hunter Renfro. There you go. Darren Waller as well going against the Jets. Like I said, Jets are the worst against the pass in the entire league. Okay, the worst. And then it's Jacksonville. But the worst, the Jets, have been giving it up. 
So Darren Waller and Renfro are in fantastic spots. I love Waller. I think he's in a bounce-back spot here. He let a lot of people down against the Falcons last week. I'm expecting a bounce-back performance here. I wouldn't be surprised if he got over 20 DraftKings points. I would not be surprised. Darren Waller's a talented dude. Ex- excited to see how he does. And then we've got Naheem Hines. I'm going to go with Jonathan Taylor. I don't know 100% as of right now, beginning of the week, what's going to happen here because Jonathan Taylor's on the COVID list or whatever. Uh, so I don't know 100% how this is going to go. If Taylor comes back, it's going to be a huge hit to Hines. But if Taylor misses, I want to make sure I have Hines. So I'm going Hines. I'm going to say that Taylor misses. I don't know 100%, but I'm going to say that he misses. And I love Hines here, um, going, especially going against Houston. Now, the run game for the Colts is going to be interesting here because Houston is one of the worst run defense, if not the worst. They might be the worst run defense in the entire league. This is a great spot here in this one. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Colts get up and run a lot and Houston have to throw a lot with the way that Colts defense has been doing. I wouldn't be surprised to see Colts get up to a lead and then Houston have to throw a lot. And Hines get a lot of run here. Hines is going to get involvement in the pass game. Pay attention to Jonathan Taylor because that will significantly hit Hines. But as of right now, I'm going to go ahead and put Hines in the first look. Last but not least, I'm going to punt defense and I'm going to go with Taysom Hill's not going to fuck up my team again. Um, I'm going to say that the Atlanta Falcons are going to have a game plan for Taysom Hill. We've got some athletic linebackers for the Falcons. We've got a fast defense. I'm expecting after just seeing Taysom Hill recently, knowing how limited Taysom Hill is and he's how much he has to do with his feet, I'm expecting the Falcons to take advantage here and do very well at pressuring Hill and doing very well at limiting him this time. A lot of times in the first games, guys can take advantage of a situation, but then the second time they see him, teams kind of can game plan a lot better for him. And a guy who's as one-dimensional as Taysom Hill, uh, I would expect the Falcons to do a lot better job here. On top of that, they're at home in Atlanta. You know their confidence is riding high after what they just did to Las Vegas. Um, New Orleans is much better than them, even with Taysom Hill being uh, – is much better than the Raiders, um, even with Taysom Hill at quarterback. But the Falcons at home in Atlanta, I could see them having a solid performance here at 2-4. I wouldn't be surprised to see some turnovers out of Taysom Hill here. And like I said, Taysom just saw this team. The Falcons just freshly saw Taysom Hill. I'm expecting them to game plan a lot better for him here and really make it tough on him. So I'm, I'm going to predict this might sound crazy. And it's not just because I'm a fan. I'm going to say the Falcons win this game. Coming high off that huge win against the Raiders, mojo riding high, going against New Orleans with Taysom Hill at quarterback. I'm going to predict Atlanta wins. That might sound stupid, but... Hey, I'm a Falcons fan. I'm wishing the best. All right, and that's it. Kirk Cousins, David Montgomery, Austin Eckler, Adam Thielen paired with Cousins, Brandon Cooks, Hunter Renfro, Waller, Hines, and Falcons. Now let's go through here. Okay, this is the way that I do my lineups. Every single spot has to have a statistical reason. Starting off, Kirk Cousins at home in a dome facing the league's worst secondary. Plain and simple. Second worst after the Jets. Cousins has been balling. David Montgomery at home in Chicago. Mitch Trubisky quarterback. Probably going to have a lot of dump off opportunities. Going against Detroit, a team that gives up a lot of pass catches to running backs and a lot of rushing yards to running backs. So David Montgomery, great spot. Austin Eckler going against New England. Bill Belichick likes to take number ones away. Expect him to focus on trying to stop Keenan Allen and a lot going Austin Eckler's way at home in Los Angeles. Adam Thielen, paired up with Kirk Cousins. I already mentioned, Jacksonville secondary, garbage. Adam Thielen is Cousins number one, and I'm expecting a big game out of him coming back from the COVID-19 list. Brandon Cooks, no Hunter Renfro, at home in Houston in a dome, most likely behind throwing a lot, going against Rocky Sin, who is the weak spot of this Colts secondary. Hunter Renfro, Going against the league's worst Jets defense. Jets give up a number, the most fantasy points to slot receivers in the league. Hunter Renfro is, in fact, a slot receiver. Darren Waller. This is just plain and simple because I have the money to go there. Uh, going against a bad Jets secondary. Darren Waller is a wide receiver one. He busted last week. I would fully expect him to bounce back in this one. Naheem Hines, pay attention to Jonathan Taylor. But if Jonathan Taylor misses, big bump to Hines. Going against the league's worst rushing defense. Colts should get up pretty easy and run the ball a lot. Love Hines here at 5-3. And then the Falcons defense. Just saw Taysom Hill at home in a dome. Should game plan a lot more, a lot better for Taysom Hill. I wouldn't be surprised to see some turnovers here and them actually hit value pretty easily at 2-4. All right, we don't need much at 2-4. All right, and that's it. So there you go. 
everybody there as you know, but I would not be surprised as the NFL has been going. I would not be surprised if a guy like, you know, Austin Eckler busts or Brandon Cooks busts and doesn't even see a target, even with Will Fuller out. Uh, uh, Adam Thielen gets one target, even though he plays every snap. Like, that's how the NFL has been this year. But at the end of the day, like I always say, you can only control what you can control, okay? And one thing that you can control is the amount of effort that you put in. Plain and simple, whether you win or lose, as long as you go in knowing you put the most possible effort, you put that fucking 100% effort in, whatever the outcome is, you just got to accept it in DFS. It just is what it is, you know? And a lot of times, doing like putting your all into it, eventually that big one will come. And I'm looking for my big one, Lord. I'm looking for it. Week five, let's get me a replay of that. I really want to smash and get a takedown before NBA comes. I'm praying for it. We should, I mean, the only way to go is up after the last few weeks. So let's get it. Thank you guys for joining me as always. Drop a like down below. Comment who you think is going to be the highest scoring player on DraftKings and their point total for a chance at $100. Let's get it. I'm up.